Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a school for all of your city building needs. The school has a large main entrance, including a flagpole, ramps, it has a clock on the front and a large overhang so you don't get wet in the rain. It has entrances and exits on both sides. The back of the school has a lunch eating area, a small basketball court and a small soccer slash football field, including a back entrance. The inside of the school is laid out in a nice, easy, manageable way, split into hallways. Many of the hallways have lockers and cameras, drinking fountains, and of course, access to all of the entrances and exits. The school has three different types of classrooms. A general purpose classroom, a science classroom, and also a computer classroom. We have an assembly hall, a cafeteria. If we go upstairs, we also have a library, a teacher's lounge, a reception, and the dreaded principal's office. <laughs> this tutorial is only going to focus on what you can see here. The entire outside of the school, the building, all of the stuff around the sides, the front, and the back. The actual outside and building portion of the school. Part 2 will focus on all of the inside stuff that I just showed you. We don't actually make it in this video, but I just thought that it'd be fun to show you it before you actually built the outside building. And that's it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Click the little bell next to the subscription button if you want to make sure that you get all of my videos sent directly to your sub box, which is very important if you want to make the inside and if you want to make the school bus that's going to come along with it and any other additional builds as well. You're probably going to want to subscribe and make sure that that little bell is clicked. But without any further ado, let's get started. Now just before we begin building everybody, here are all of the materials that you will need to make your school. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those and enough of those materials as well. The amount of space required to make the school is a giant 84 by 84 block area on the ground. You are more than welcome to make this grid in your world if you are planning out a city or a town or wherever it may be. However, it isn't required. And that that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Make sure that you've got all of those materials. Make sure you've got enough room to build the school. Make sure that you're ready. And once you are, class will be in session. Step 1 students, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of the grid. That is of course if you've made the grid. If not, just bear with us one moment. We have to find the starting position. From this corner block, I want you to count backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I then want you to count to the right by 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is where we're going to kick things off. Place a row of 22 light grey concrete going right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Extend that 20 second block towards you by 2. 1, 2. Go right by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Extend that 10th block towards you by 1. And go right by 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Extend inwards by 1. And then to the right by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Extend inwards by 2. 1, 2. And then all the way over to the right by 21. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Just like that. I then want you to take this 21st block and I want you to extend it backwards. 
I want you to extend it backwards by 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I want you to place a terracotta in front of that 12th block. I want you to extend it forwards and upwards, each by one. I want you to use stone brick stairs and place a row of six stone brick stairs coming across from each terracotta. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, whoops, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. I want you to stick terracotta on the ends of those stairs like this. That will be a side entrance for the school. Very important later on. However, I want you to return back to the row of light grey concrete and I want you to continue placing a row of 19 light grey moving backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Perfect. Now, this is where things get quite easy because you can now extend that 19th block all the way over across the back of the build like this and you want to line it up with where we started on the front of the build over there. I think that that is about perfect. That's about right. Make sure that it lines up with the front. However, the only thing is we also want to make that staircase over there on this side because there's two entrances out of the side of the school, one on each side. We're going to extend this light grey concrete towards the front of the build and we're going to place 12 light grey. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Stick a terracotta on the end there. And then place a terracotta above and in front. Place a row of 6 stone brick, uh, stone brick stairs coming towards the front of the build. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Stick terracottas on the end like that to form a staircase and then simply extend the light grey concrete forwards eventually until you connect to the front of the build. And once you are finished, you should end up with quite a grand shape really. It should look exactly like this. It kind of reminds me of like an astronaut helmet or something. I'd, a really wide one, but an astronaut helmet nonetheless. Once you have achieved that, ladies and gentlemen, we can now start building the walls of the school a little bit. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to begin on the front left-hand corner of the build. It always comes back to this corner. And I want you to place 10 terracotta on top of this corner. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Stick a white concrete block on top. I want you to come towards this position. The most sticky out left hand corner point of the build, which is right here, I want you to place 11 terracotta on top of this corner. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're going to extend to the right, okay? And we're going to join down to the opposite corner. So this here, this is the middle part of the school. This has a roof and a clock and all sorts of stuff. I want you to grab the quartz slabs and I want you to stick a quartz slab on the left hand upper side of this part of the build. And I want you to extend that quartz slab forwards and then to the right. And we're then going to go up, right, up, right, up, right, up, right, up, right. Now, I believe that is roughly the middle, but what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing from the other side as well. So we're going to take the right side, we're going to stick a quartz slab, forwards, and then we're going to go like left, up, left, up, left, up, left, up, left. Oh, yep, yeah, you see, that's just about the middle. And then we go left, and then we extend the two blocks in the middle upwards. And that's how you achieve the roof effect. We are now going to fill the middle part of the roof in with terracotta. You only have to place a certain number of blocks. It's best to do it from the back, like this. And then that will give you this sort of effect from the front. 
Now, once you have done that, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to recommend that you do is also on the front right hand corner of the build, we're also going to place terracotta in such a way that we did on the front of the build as well. So that'll be 10 terracotta coming up from the right corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to stick a white concrete on the end. And you can even, to establish some walls, some boundaries, you can extend that white concrete backwards towards the back of the build. And you can extend the back corner of the build upwards using terracotta. And you can meet that row of white concrete, so to speak. So that's the sort of thing that we're looking for. And we're just going to build up a little bit of the back of the build and make a bit more of the structure. And then we can kind of like mass fill it in a little bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So... I want you to, on the back of the build here, where we have this terracotta, I'm going to place two terracottas moving to the right. One, two. We're going to extend up by one, and we're going to place two upside down quartz stairs going right. One, two. Three terracotta. One, two, three. Two upside down quartz stairs. Three terracotta. One, two, three. Two upside down quartz stairs. Three terracotta, one, two, three. Two upside down quartz stairs, one, two. Three terracotta, one, two, three. Two upside down quartz stairs. And then we're going to check how many windows we have because in total we should have six. That's one, two, three, four, five. We need one more. So three terracotta, one, two, three. Two quartz stairs, one, two. Now when we get to that last window, we want to place two terracotta we want to join down to the ground like this we want to extend this terracotta upwards like so and we want to extend the white concrete block across this is a particularly important row of terracotta so we'll extend it across to meet it we want to extend that row of terracotta, light grey concrete, all of it, one row forwards like so. We want to create a clear boundary. You'll find that that lines up with the front of the build. We want to do the same on this opposite side here. Okay, so on this opposite side, we're going to do the same sort of thing. So what we can do to create some structure in our school is we can extend the white concrete backwards from the front left corner here. We can join it down to the ground using terracotta, just like this. It'll connect down to the corner, like that. And then we want to create the same sort of window pattern that we have there onto here. So that will be, let me show you, we start from this side here. We're going to place two terracotta going left. One, two. Going to go up by one. And then we're going to create six windows in total. So that means two upside down stairs. One, two. One, two, three terracotta. Two windows, three terracotta. Two windows, three terracotta. Until we have six of them. So that's three. And then two, uh, two quartz stairs. One, two, three. Two quartz stairs. One, two, three. Two quartz stairs. I think that that is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's perfect. On the end, we place two terracottas. We extend that terracotta down. We extend it up as high as the row of terracotta just to the left of us. We place a row of white concrete that will connect all the way over here. Perfect. And we extend out the middle part of this just one row forwards like that because we want to establish the back entrance to the school. This is where you're going to be able to eat your dinner. We're going to have a little field here and we might even make some more amendments to the school at a later point in time. But that's kind of what we want to have right now. So it's worth mentioning that all of these windows, right, they're made in the same way. They have two rows of glass on top of them. Okay, two rows of glass on top of every single window, and all of the windows are, of course, upside down quartz stairs. So each window is comprised, they're two blocks wide, they have upside down quartz stairs at the bottom, they're three blocks high, they have two rows of glass on top of them. And as I mentioned over and over and over and over, over again, every single window is the same. So once you have your upside down quartz stairs, once you have your two rows of glass, that is about as much detail as is on most of the walls. Like, the outside of the school isn't that 
detailed, really, when it comes down to it. So they're all of the windows. Above every single window is going to be three rows of terracotta, so it's easiest to do a whole row across, like one, two, three rows of terracotta, like this, through the entire middle part of the school. That's how it wants to look. So above every single window, you're going to have uh, three rows of terracotta. And then the thing about that is that once you've uh, done your three rows of terracotta above the windows, pretty much in every single event, you're going to find that there is another row of windows directly above the previous row of windows. So once you kind of have that, you're separating the lower floor, the ground floor to, from the second floor, there's two floors to the school then you will be able to also place another set of windows directly above these ones. So I'm just going to put some framework in for them because it's easier to place stairs with uh, stuff next to them. But leaving a three row gap, the takeaway from this is that you can place another set of windows up above. And they are made, of course, in the same way as I just said, and we'll be doing some of these on the front of the build as well. An equal amount, if not more, on the front of the build. There might even be less. The front of the build is far more shapely than the back of the build. I want to do clearly distinguish the front and back of the build. So that's why the front and the back look a little bit different. But you can see that the windows are identical to the ones below. And obviously they look a little bit weird now because we don't have anything in between them. Like we don't have all the terracotta, we don't have all the wall in between them but that will certainly change once we get down to it but we're going to make the windows on this side as well and once we have done all the windows on the back we will focus on the little bit of detail that we do have to do on the back as well there is a little bit of detail because we have to make the back entrance that's how you get out to the actual back of the school at some point in time i mean right now there's like a field and kind of like a hard play area meaning and and there's some like you know some benches that you can kind of like sit and eat your food on but other than that there's not too much there other than like a field in that play area but we might add more um if you guys uh, have some suggestions but that's what we have right now on the back of the school that's looking perfectly fine now we have to add a walkway so there's going to be a walkway to get up into the school the school set a couple of levels above every everything else right so leaving one blocks gap coming in from both sides you're going to want to leave a blocks gap place a terracotta extend it up and towards you both of those and then I'm just going to place a little bit of light grey concrete behind and then some stone brick stairs leading up and into the school. So it's kind of identical to what we made a little bit earlier on the sides. I'm going to place a row of terracotta backing this. And then we've just got to kind of create an entrance. So there's going to be a double doorway in the into the entrance like this. So it's going to be right in the middle. You, you could make it wider if you like, but I think two doors is sufficient. I'm going to place a little bit of glass left and right of the door and a little bit of white concrete above it. Like it's a very very simple back entrance like it's 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 not too it's not too complicated whatsoever. I'm going to build up the rest of the area with a little bit of terracotta. Feel free to make this more complicated if you like. You could even go a little bit like modern with it so to speak. Like you could place a little bit of like a quartz slab just to kind of like frame the lower part if you wanted to, but that's up to you. Uh, you could even kind of like extend it out a little bit and you could like make a, make kind of like a an overhang. You could do all sorts, but what we also want to have up here is we kind of want to have a copy of the roof on this side as well. So we're going to take the rows of terracotta here on the left and the right. We're going to place quartz slabs on the left and right sides of the terracotta and we're going to extend the, uh, the quartz slabs inwards and upwards just exactly how we did on the front of the build and part of the roof is actually going to connect together as well so you're just going to kind of want to extend each side inwards equally like this that's perfect so you can kind of see the sort of vibe that we've got going on here 
Uh, feel free to make sure that both sides slot together because uh, I'm kind of really, really nervous that both sides aren't going to slot together. Whoops. So you can just extend the top of the roof. I'd recommend the top because not all blocks. Oh, perfect. That makes me so happy because not every single one of the blocks actually does connect backwards. I think that they do except for the side ones. The side ones uh, kind of wrap around the roof a little bit, but there we go. That makes me very happy. So the, the front and the back of the, the school are actually perfectly aligned, which is great. I'm going to place some terracotta above this back entrance, riding all the way up to the top. So this is going to come all the way up to the top where the roof is. It's just going to sit underneath and it's just going to fill in any of the... Whoops, hit my head. That was my bad. And it's just going to fill in any gaps that we would have. So the gaps are pretty much where we would have the quartz slabs, I think. Because the slabs will just sit on top of the terracotta and you'll be able to see this, right? So um, the slabs will just sit on top of the terracotta like this and the uh you do have some quartz blocks involved as well it's actually a little bit easier to use some quartz block uh in place of some of these slab but this is how the roof will look like this i guess we've kind of like messed that up a little bit because this these terracotta shouldn't exist here just these overhanging ones and then we can place here 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 just kind of like connecting the roof backwards. My bad. But this is what the entire like back of the school should look like. Just imagine that there are of course also like the windows are filled in. And we are missing just one key component here. Just uh, up at the top. We have a clock. Same thing that we'll have on the front actually. So we might make that right now. The clock requires not too many materials. Basically all it needs is it needs some white concrete. Which we have right here. Uh, dark oak trapdoor and buttons. Now the clock is the same on the front as it is the back, so you take the two middle terracottas up at the top of the build here, you drop down two rows, destroy the two middle blocks, extend down by three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then you take the middle two of the left and the right like this, and then you fill the center of it in using white concrete like that. You stick buttons on the outside of the clock to make it look like numbers, and then you use dark oak trap doors. Now, how do we do this? We place it sideways right and up like that. Nope, maybe this way. Perfect. And you just create two hands using the dark oak trap doors. Now, you do that not only on the front, of course, but if we fly all the way over here, we do the same thing on the back. Now, on the back, we don't have to destroy much terracotta. You drop down to the third row, so you, you leave the top two middle uh, square alone. You destroy these two here. One, two, three, four one two three four you extend the middle blocks on the left and the right and then you just place buttons all the way around so very similar to what we did on the back and of course we're going to have the same time as we did on the back as well which would be what would that be that would be three o'clock i suppose uh feel free to obviously make whatever time you like or you know just make it you can make the clock in a few different ways you don't even have to have one if you don't want to originally i was just going to make a window but i like the idea of a clock being there uh I, I just think it adds a little bit of something so now we've established the back of the school the back of the school is pretty much entirely complete except for the small details i want to focus on the sides of the school now and then we can start talking about the front the front is the most detailed in terms of structure so that's the last on the agenda on the sides of the school, and both sides are identical, we are going to need, and we can chuck the dark trap doors and stuff away, we're going to need the, we've got doors, we need glass, uh, glass block, glass pane, uh, we need the stairs as well, and we already have like a set of actual stairs here. So first of all, I'm going to back these stairs with terracotta, and then coming in one row, from both the left and the right side, I'm going to place a row of free glass, one, two, three, coming upwards. One, two, three. Very simple entrances and exits here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to place white terracotta coming inwards from the glass. Oak doors between. White stained glass above the doors. Two rows of terracotta above the glass and the doors. And then I'm going to split this area in the middle using two rows of terracotta. It kind of looks like a hammer. It actually kind of looks like a paintbrush or like an, an American like electrical socket or something. What we then want to do is we want to place two upside down quartz stairs on both sides like this. 
And then we want to place two rows of glass on both sides like this. Here. And here. Here. And here. And then just above there will be terracotta. So they're just the two windows on this side. They're a little bit lower than the other windows, but that is perfectly fine. It should still look quite nice in the position that they are. So now that you have done that to that side, we of course have to go and do the exact same thing to the other side. So the first thing that you know we have to do is we just have to place a backing of terracotta onto the stairs. We have to place a row of free glass coming inwards from both sides. One, two, three. One, two, three. A row of white concrete to go with the white glass. We have to place some oak doors in between, some glass above the doors. Two rows of terracotta on top. We split the middle upwards exactly how we did on that opposite side, ladies and gentlemen. And then we place upside down quartz stairs here, here, and here. And here we place the two rows of glass on top as well. And once we have done that, we have two identical sides, which is fantastic because that's exactly what we're after. So we want to have something which should look like that. And of course, on the opposite side there, we have that as well. So believe it or not, for the, for the most part, right, there's nothing else on the left and right side of the buildings. Now, if you like later on, you can add windows, but you're going to find that if you add windows, the classrooms are going to start being being really really weird like you won't be able to place anything on the sides of the room uh, the classrooms are most for the most part quite small so uh, a lot of windows on the front a lot of windows on the back every classroom has about two windows you probably don't want to add any more to the sides but uh, that will be up to you when the time comes so the next thing that we're going to focus on is the front of the building all right so the front of the building is very, very similar to the back of the building, except it's got a bit of a better shape. So what I'm going to recommend you doing, where we have these rows of free light grey concrete that kind of come inwards, I'm going to recommend that you place the rows of 10 terracotta on top of them and kind of follow the shape of them with the white concrete. So you kind of want to have a frame set in like this and the white concrete will connect to the middle part of the build kind of like this and in doing this it will kind of help you envision how the front of the school is going to go to get uh, going to go together so you can kind of see now that there's kind of like three separate parts like you've got the longest part on the left a little part in the middle and then kind of like a little wider part but that's like the main entrance and we want to have the same thing on the right. This does mean, by the way, that the classrooms on the front of the building are a little... Some of them are slightly different shapes than each other, but everything will be completely fine. Um, everything is... Uh, all the classrooms and all of the rooms and stuff inside the building have already been designed. So, you know, things aren't going to look weird despite the fact that we've got some different shaped classrooms and stuff. As a matter of fact, some of the uh, more interesting rooms in the in the actual school are in those two front parts of the building because they are bigger. It allows you to have some uh, more room like the principal's office, like the teacher's lounge, like all sorts of cool things like that. So that's what we want to have right there. So now it's a lot easier to kind of like figure out and digest how exactly this is going to be put together. So... The front of the building has a load of windows, just like the back does over there, right? The left and right side each have four windows, and they're made in the same way, actually, as the ones over there. You start on the front of the building on the left side here, and you place two terracotta coming to the right, one, two, and then you go up by one. Place two upside-down quartz stairs going right, one, two, and then three terracotta. You repeat this until you run out of room. You will run out of room, trust me. Like, uh, eventually you're going to hit one of the walls that we just created. And perfect, exactly like that. You'll hit that wall. Uh, additionally, you want to have, of course, two rows of glass on top of these windows. So, you can use glass block. Uh, I'd recommend glass pane. Because, the well, the front of the building isn't so bad. The front of the building is a little bit shapely. But the back of the building, you certainly need pane. Because it doesn't have very much depth to it. 
I'm going to place three rows of terracotta above the windows. So that'll be right, one, two, three, right here. So three rows of terracotta above the windows. There's a lot of continuity to this build. So where the windows are on the front, they're pretty much on the back. Where the floors are on the front, there they run through the entire building like it's 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 a really quite simple building but it works really nicely so now that we have those windows down below we want the same ones up above exactly how we did on the back i cannot stress that enough this this building is very logical very very logical so like the the windows on the front are on the back the windows down below or up above they're made in the same way you could even extend this school if you wanted to by the way like if you wanted to make it wider it's a pr pretty big anyway but if you wanted to make it wider you certainly could uh, all you'd have to do is just keep repeating the windows pattern going left and right so there you go there are the windows on the left side i'm gonna do the same to the right because it's, it's the exact same thing that we've just done, except just, you know, swapped over onto this opposite side. We start from this bottom right corner, we place two terracottas going left, we go up one, you can even see the same, uh, the same shape that we did on the other side, and then it's two upside down quartz stairs, three terracottas, just moving across. Same thing, so two upside down stairs, eventually you will run out of room, that time has come, here, Two rows of glass on top. Again, you can use block if you want. I actually prefer block in a lot of circumstances. I, uh, I've kind of went off glass pane. I think it's because too many blocks grip it. And it can look weird like going around corners. But I mean, in this situation, it's better. Three rows of terracotta above the windows. So that'll be two. And then this will be three. And then I'm just going to fill in the lines in between the windows and then place the quartz itself just to make it a little bit easier. I did, oh, I just thought I built above a window then, which would have been very, very silly of me. So upside down quartz stairs, four of them on both the left and the right. And then we have the kind of the middle part of the school to make. I keep wanting to call it a middle school. I guess it, this could be any school, but I kind of think of this as a high school just because of its size. So this is what we should have right now, ladies and gentlemen. You should see that both signs are indeed identical. They are. Once you have done that, we can now take care of these two inner parts on the left and the right, as they are, of course, the same as well. So if we start here on the left, we always start on the left. We're going to start at the bottom and we're going to place, I guess, on this particular side. I do want to make sure that this is correct. I want to place two terracottas coming upwards. One, two. And then two upside down quartz stairs going right. One, two. Three terracotta. One, two, three. Two upside down quartz stairs. And then just the one terracotta. All there is to it. That, that is that, ladies and gentlemen. What we then do, of course, and I bet you guys could have predicted it, is we place two rows of glass pane on top of the upside down quartz stairs. We place one, two, three terracottas on top of the windows, like this. And then we do the exact same thing that we just did down below. So we're going to have the same separation of windows. We're going to have the same height, the same, everything is the same. Except it's a little bit higher. So, just like here, 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 here. That is absolute perfection. So, now that we've done that side, we can just hop over to this side and do again the exact same thing. So, we'll start down here at the bottom on the right corner, and we place two terracotta on top of each other, two upside down quartz stairs going left. And then three terracotta, two quartz stairs, and then you can only really just place one, and then you join to the middle of the build anyway. So what you then do is you place two rows of glass on top of the quartz stairs. I'm sure that I don't have to keep repeating myself, but I'm going to anyway. We place two rows of glass on top of the quartz, uh, on top of the quartz stairs. We place three rows of terracotta in separation, and then we repeat the windows up above. And once you've done that, believe it or not, you've done a huge part of the school. A huge part of the school. You will have done pretty much most of the details in the actual walls of the school. From this point, it pretty much just needs filling in, but we're actually going to leave that until a little bit later. One thing I do want to do, however, is place a trim of quartz slab 
all the way around the top of the white concrete part of the school because I think it makes it look really, really cool. I've got to start rhyming stuff with school. Cool, school, put, pool, lol. Anyway, we want to. I, I can't believe that they're the only words that I could come up with to rhyme. Uh, and we just want to place the quartz slabs all the way around the top of the white concrete part of the school, just like this. And it will just make it look. It will just make it look nice. Like it's it's a little bit modern to do this, but it's like two nice uh, shades of white, kind of like offset against each other, and it all joins into the middle part like that. Like it's it's quite a satisfying part to put on the school if you take a look. Now that we've done that, ladies and gentlemen, what we do also have to do is we have to create the main entrance, which is right here. And to do that, we're going to start on the left side here. It always comes over to the left. We're actually missing something for this. We need to grab the smooth stone slabs. I don't think we'll need quartz stairs again. And we need to, starting from the left here, we're going to go right and place two terracotta, six smooth stone slabs, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two terracotta, just like this. And then behind this, we are going to place a white concrete on the left and the right behind the slabs. We're going to place some smooth stone slabs behind as well. And we're going to rise them up to turn into proper blocks. We want to have a double door right in the middle with two glass either side of the double door. Very simple doorway as always. And then white concrete kind of just surrounding the entire thing. So we'll have something which should look exactly like that, ladies and gentlemen, which looks pretty good. If you can imagine, the middle part of this is going to be filled in with terracotta and thus the entrance will be sunk back a little bit. So it will uh, it'll look a, a little bit stylish. I, I actually quite like how the entrance is going to end up looking. But there's a couple of things with the entrance that we have to do from here. So, for instance, what we have to do, and I'm going to grab... We need a few different things for this and some different materials. So I'm just going to get rid of the oak door. We definitely need smooth stone. We don't need any glass. And we need these stone brick stairs and also the iron bars. So, coming from the, like, the front left-hand corner of the school... Front left hand corner is a bit vague, like the middle left corner here from the school. So you've got like that corner, that corner and this corner, you take this corner. You want to place a row of seven terracotta coming outwards from this corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you want to leave a gap of three going right. And then you want to place a row of six pillar quartz block coming up from the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. And then we can whip out the stone brick stairs a second. And you can place a row of five stone brick stairs going right. One, two, three, four, five. And then you can place another pillar equal in height to the one just of the left of us. And we want to have the same thing on the right side here. We want to take this particular corner, place seven terracotta coming outwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're then going to leave a gap of three in the ground, and place a pillar of uh, place a pillar of quartz that is equal in height to the rest of the other pillars. Leave a gap of five using stone brick stairs. One, two, three, four, five. And then we want to have yet another pillar. And they should just line up perfectly. Additionally, we're going to place some stone brick stairs all in between them. Just like that. The left and right sides where we have the terracotta are actually designated to be kind of like a, a ramped area. You know, for like wheelchairs and for like people that like don't feel like walking up the stairs. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to place three terracotta. One, two, three. Just coming backwards. And we're going to place iron bars on top of the terracotta on both of the rows of terracotta. And we're going to do the same thing on this opposite side. We're going to place three terracotta. One, two, three. And then we're going to place iron bars on top of both sides of the terracotta. Just like this. And then what we have to do is we have to kind of like make the ramp out of a different material. We're going to use a little bit of stone slab. And we're just going to connect the 
bottom of the ramp area with stone slab here. And then we're going to place three rows, one, two, three, of smooth stone slab. So just half a row like this. And then we're going to have like this entire area here. It's all going to be smooth stone slabs just like that. So you can see that there's a gradient. And we want that same thing on the opposite side as well. So the first row connected together is just going to be smooth stone slabs. Three rows of slabs. And then three rows of full blocks and it's just going to sit i think it'll look better maybe if it just sits behind the terracotta if not we'll use some stone brick and i want to fill that area in with stone bricks itself which i don't seem to have on me which is a bit of a shame but that's okay they will be in the item list and this entire area is going to be filled in with stone bricks and we're going to make the overhang portion of this look pretty good so we just want to have something once this little area has been filled in. I promise you it's going to look quite good because it's nice and diverse. There's a lot of, a lot of different materials uh, at play here as well. It look a little something like that, which doesn't look too bad if you ask me. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to kind of connect the pillars together at the tops using quartz slab like so. So we're going to place quartz slab connecting all the pillars together just around at the top. They'll join back and hit the school. Oh, <laughs> my bad. We've, we've got to go a little bit further. My bad, my bad. So here and then that, that won't connect there anymore. And then we're just going to place some white concrete in the middle of this. So we're going to have, again, we're using a lot of different materials. We're using quartz, uh, we're using quartz slabs, we're using pillow quartz block, we're using white concrete. I think that the blend of materials turns a very simple building into a, quite an impressive looking one. So you can see that we kind of have like that. And then all we have to do to kind of like pull it all together, and this is another kind of like modern uh, design feature, is we're going to underneath and outside of the row of white concrete, we're just going to add another row of quartz slab. So you get a little bit of depth in there and you get kind of like an interesting shape emerging from the overhang at the front of the building. So yeah, that looks, that looks pretty cool if you ask me. And it'll look even better once all of the walls are filled in. Which leads me on to this next part, ladies and gentlemen. Now, believe it or not, we have done a huge part of the school. All we have to do, in regards to the actual school building itself, the actual building, not the outsides, because we are going to be doing those two, we have to fill all the walls in with terracotta, and we're going to fill the roof in with white concrete. This is a timely task. I'm not going to be hanging around for this. So once you have filled in all of the walls with terracotta, once you've filled the roof in with white concrete, here's what it all look like. Once you have completed all of that, we have to make the outside of the school look a little bit nicer, which does involve us doing quite a few things. So we're going to use some leaves, smooth stone slabs, lime terracotta, green terracotta, probably some smooth stone as well, grey concrete and some white concrete. So, first of all, I'm just going to kind of point out some areas that need to be dug out and replaced. So, I'll give you a for instance. Between the areas of the ramps where the smooth stone starts, we have to dig out rows of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this area here is going to be smooth stone. We want to have a bit of a walkway leading up into our school. This is about where the walkway begins and in front of this is going to be a road. So you can imagine that that will be dug out and replaced with smooth stone, okay? However, what we also want to do is we want to dig out the area in front of this. and. I'm actually going to dig out the entire width of the school. This is where having the grid comes in handy. I'm going to dig out in front of the school and I'm going to dig out the entire width of the school and I'm going to have a road. Now the road is rather important and the reason that the road is important is because sometime down the line we're going to make a school bus. It's not going to be this video but we are going to be adding a school bus in front of our school. So there is a reason to have a road. There's not really a reason to have a bank security van outside of the school, 
But there is a reason to have a road. I, I built my school right next to my bank, and the fact that that security van is, like, right on the corner, it's a little bit weird, a little bit weird. But, basically, we already know that we have a row of six smooth stone coming outwards. The roads, each half, are a row of four. So, we already have one each side, so one, two, three, one, two, three, we have both halves of the road. And then in the middle is going to be a row of white concrete. So, you can imagine that going through uh, the entire front of the school. You can see how that road will look. Now, additionally, we're going to have a pathway on the sides of the school. Now, the pathway for the school, it's going to come right out of the side of the school here. It's going to be made out of smooth stone, like this, and the path is going to come forwards and it will connect to the road. So uh, people can kind of like class finishers, ding, 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 class will, class will finish and people will be able to come out the front of the school, the back of the school, the sides of the school and they can be diverted, all of them to the front. So that is the reason that we're going to have kind of like a path and there'll be one on that side as well leading out to the, uh, to the front of the school. Additionally, this path is actually going to come all the way backwards and it's going to connect to the back of the school as well. So on the back here, we're going to have a row of one, two, three for the path and it's all going to join together in a massive loop, like I said. So, I, I kind of just want to lay out this stone path for you. And, of course, in, in a little moment, in a while, we are going to be, you know, we'll, we'll be digging out a large area. And replacing it with the materials that it needs to be replaced with. But it might be a little bit easier, to be honest, if I do dig out this area and kind of add an outline and kind of give you guys a bird's eye view. That might be a better way of doing things. Uh, so... The path will come here and here as well. And I'm, I'm just going to add like an outline of smooth stone. Basically though, the path is about three blocks wide everywhere. The smooth stone path that is. The path's about three rows wide everywhere. So you don't have to uh, be that precise with it. You can make it bigger, smaller, you know, you can connect it in different places, but it kind of goes in what I would describe as a horseshoe shape going all the way around the edge of the school. Uh, another couple of things that we have to do once we've done this, I guess we can talk about them when we actually get to that point though. Oh, we've just got to connect that part and then we've just got to dig this part out as well because I do want to show you how it all like loops around and connects because I don't know, it's, it's very satisfying to me. Uh, the, you know, like we're drawing all of these lines and it's very satisfying to see how they all go together. Perfect. So now if we take a bird's eye view look, it might be hard actually, like we might have to go way too high, but can you see? Perfect. You can see where it like loops around. It looks like a stingray or something. You can see where it like loops around from the sides. It goes all the way around the back. And it, of course, finishes on that opposite side there. So you can imagine that all of that has to be dug out and replaced. But before we do all of that, I want to add some bushes to the front, back, and sides of the school. So, oh, I can't believe it. I actually, I actually forgot this row underneath the windows. My bad. So on the front of the school, the bushes are a little bit different because they can afford to be a bit wider. So, on the front of the school, the bushes are going to start probably about um, one or two rows away from the side. We might just make it one. And we're just going to create a two block wide gap here, just like using some smooth stone slabs. And we're just going to fill this in using oak leaves, like the entire thing, and then we can kind of flare up in between the windows some of the oak leaves, kind of like this. So, the, your bushes can look different to this, you can do what you want with them, but, you know, my, my bushes, they're going to look a little something like that, they're kind of going to ride up the front of the school a little bit. We're not connecting the school all together, like, we're not starting from the corner so it doesn't look square, and we just don't want a single row of bushes because we want the bushes to look... We want the bushes to look quite 3D, so that's, that's exactly what we're going to be doing, so here... Here and here, here and here, here and here. The front has the largest bushes of them all, and uh, I think that that just looks quite good like that, doesn't it? And then on the sides, that does open us up to uh, do some as well. So on the sides, I'd recommend just having just like straight up just like one row of bush, 
and uh, not making it touch the edge again. We, d we don't want to square everything off. And then when it comes to the back of the build, I can't remember from memory. Oh, from the back of the build, we do actually square things up a little bit, but we're just going to place... Um, actually, I don't know whether to just like straight or make like, like make that grass. I might make that grass. No, I'll, I'll tell you what I will do. I will make this all bush, and then it can kind of like weave in. And we might have to add a little bit of grass or something. So just a little bit of bush here. And we might have to extend that path, but it's no big deal. So maybe the path will start a little bit further. Because we've only added one line of the path in, so it's no big deal. So maybe the path will like extend out a little bit. Maybe like we'll have two rows gap instead of just like the one. So maybe like we'll extend the pathway just from the stair section and then here. I'm going to get rid of these smooth stone slabs or smooth stone here. Going to join here. And yeah, because this will look better and then we can have, then we can have some, uh, maybe even some stone brick slabs instead. So there we go. So we can have a, what we can do is place some smooth stone slabs around the bottoms of the hedges here. And we're just moving the pathway back a couple of rows. It's no big deal. So now the path itself, it will just it will just come here. It will just start and end. So there's going to be a couple of rows of grass. It's going to make the back look a little bit more interesting this way instead of everything kind of like hugging the building. So uh, yeah, we've just we've just changed one of the rows of uh, of the path. I hope that you hadn't dug that out and filled it all in yet. So there we go. That's that's much better planning. And then now you can kind of see like where the path goes. We're going to have a couple of rows of grass in front of that. And we just have to add a little bit of oak leaves just on the side here. So like here and here. Perfect. So that's a lot of smooth stone. We're going to have a decent amount of grass there as well. That's all looking fine and dandy. Uh, on the back of the build, we have two rather large projects to do on the back of the build. They're quite easy to do, but they they do take a little bit of time. So it all stems from this walkway here on the back. It all stems from the stairs. So from the stairs, this left side terracotta, we have two rows of grass, three rows of path. So the grass, by the way, just to let you know, it's going to be like a mix of lime and green concrete. We have three rows of path, and then we're going to have 15 rows of grey concrete. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're going to have 15 rows of grey concrete, because it's going to be a... How would you say? It's going to be a kind of like a quad area where you, like, you can eat your lunch. It's going to be as wide as the school is... And then we already know that it's about 15 rows back. So this area is going to have to be dug out. And it's going to have to be replaced with grey concrete as well. These are all very lengthy, time-consuming projects. That's kind of like why we're laying down a lot of outlines and stuff now. So that we can easily get to this a little bit later on. So that's perfect, okay? So we're then going to leave a gap between the grey concrete area. We're going to leave a gap of one, two, three, four, five, six smooth stone slabs. This entire area between uh, like the kind of lunch eating area, or, or you might call it a quad. I think it's called a quad. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know the terminology, to be honest with you. But I think uh, it, it's, it's just a place where like people can eat. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even like make a basketball court back here, or like there's a few things that you could add to your school, to be honest. Like, but there's a six-block gap, and then we are going to use a white concrete rectangle. And you don't have to count anything out. You just have to extend it over to the right, line it up with the right side of the school extend it and connect it to the stone path and it's going to be the same dimensions as the eating area except this side this is going to be a soccer field or it's like just a field you could put anything here it's just like a field like at my school there wasn't really much that you could do like we had a field and an eating area like there there wasn't that much so kind of like a little you know 
And if you want, there are tutorials on the channel for like basketball courts, um, soccer fields, like there's even like a baseball field that you could like modify to add to the school. But I figured I'd keep it simple. You could even have a playground depending on what the age of the kids um, going to this school are. So all of that can actually stay grass, this entire area, that can stay grass. When it comes to everywhere else that's not being filled in, we have a pattern, okay? And we'll start with the front of the build and we'll move backwards. So this pattern is going to continue through from the start of the build to the back of the build. And I know that this is a lot of information, but it should be easy when we get to it. It's simply three rows of lime, one row of green terracotta. So the grass, I'm going to dig out all the grass except for the football pitch. All the grass area is going to be three lime, one green. And that's that's all we're going to do. So we're going to dig all of this out and we're going to have rows of like nicely pruned grass. And the back half of the build is actually going to mirror what the front half of the build is. So it's going to come to about here, right? And then since we stopped here on two greens, we're going to mirror what we did over there. So we're going to have like two green terracotta and then one green. So it wants to be a mirror. And then we are just going to continue the pattern. And again, this this might actually, I'm realizing this might look a little bit weird now, but it's, well, once we get to it, it's going to be fine. And then, uh, so that'd be three, one green. And then we'll, we'll just start here. So what we'll do is we'll place like one, one lime and then one green. So so that it, it almost looks as though like it follows through and then free lime one green and this is all going to follow through the school like horizontally almost and it's all going to make sense once it's been done so free lime one green and then it will kind of stop on free lime which is perfect so if you can kind of see like that pattern starting from the front going to the back that's going to be present throughout the entire school Ladies and gentlemen, that is a load of information to drop on you. I do apologize, but here's here's all it boils down to, okay? On the front of the school, we dig out that stone area, replace it with stone. We dig, we dig out the gray and white area, we will replace it with white and gray. We dig out the other stone area, replace it with stone. We dig out all of the grass area that isn't inside that white rectangle, replace it with artificial grass. We dig out the gray concrete area, replace it with gray. It literally is kind of like a color within the lines project. So let's let's take a look at it from above as it is now, ladies and gentlemen. I think that this is a this is a good way to look at it. This is what it looks like right now from this view. And once it has all been dug out and replaced with all the materials that should be there, it will look. Now this is what the entire area will look like once it has been completely filled in. You can see that we have a road out front, we have all of the pathways around the school secured, we have the pathway on the front of the school secured as well, and we have all of the grass in place. Additionally, we have the eating area and we also have the field out back as well. Now, once you have done all of those incredibly time-consuming things around the school, we have only a few things left to do. The first of which is going to be a flagpole. Outside of the school, just to the left of the stone slab path here at the front, we're going to place a flagpole. It's going to be, I would say, about 11 blocks high using light grey concrete. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, something like that. And then we're going to stick a grey concrete on top. Left of the grey concrete, the light grey concrete, I would recommend that you place your sort of flags colours in place of these. But like if you're from the UK or America, these work as well. If you're from France, they might also work, but use your own colours for this. And what we're going to do is coming down the pole, place a red white, blue, white concrete and then starting from the white concrete at the top we're going to place two red concretes coming down, two blue and then next to the blues we're going to place red so that could be the Union Jack, it could be the American flag, it could be France's flag, I, I don't know too much about geography, it probably counts as a lot of other people's flag as well, perhaps New Zealand, Australia, but that is what we're going to have right there. So that is just a flagpole with a flag hanging off. 
So up next, on the back of the building, as you might remember, that there is an eating area, and it's basically just got a load of benches and some trash cans and some stuff like that. And to make it, we need some light grey concrete, oak trapdoors, spruce wood stairs, and either spruce trapdoors or spruce wood slabs, and I'll give you the option when we get to it. So I'm going to start in this back corner here, closest towards the school, and I'm going to move in diagonally by one and place a light grey concrete with an oak trapdoor on top. Leave a gap, move in diagonally, and place a sideways facing spruce wood stairs. Gap of two, spruce wood stairs, gap of two, spruce wood stairs, gap of two, spruce wood stairs. Move out diagonally and place a light grey concrete. Perfect. So we have a set of chairs here. So we can have two different types of tables, all right? So the first table, leaving a gap of one between the stair, we can place a couple of spruce wood slabs on top of each other, extend across by two, join down, and we can extend the top of the table across like this and we can join the corners down and stick stairs on the opposite side and that's a pretty basic table and then from there you can chuck stuff on the table like cans which would be like say like for cans you'd use like a mixture of flower pots and stuff like this and that and you could even put some like uh, you know some uh, wrappers and stuff on the I'm so sorry sea pickle I do apologize, I guess you don't like being placed next to anything. There we go. You could place some stuff on the table. So, you, you know, you can add detail with this table, but you have an alternate table that you can use. Uh, from this one, you use spruce trap doors and you place spruce trap doors flicking upwards like this. And you place, coming across from these spruce trap doors, three more spruce trap doors. You'll have to crouch to place next to them. And you join them together front to back like this and you flick up two spruce trap doors here on both of the sides and this is actually quite a cool table to make it's, it's very different or you could have that table uh the issue with this table is i don't think you might be able to mm, carpet you can place carpet on there so you can place carpet you can add a little bit of detail no pickles no flower pots no nothing like that but um, you can have two, di two different ki uh, kinds of tables if you like and then all you would do is of course you'd place more tables if you wanted to and what would that be? That'd be like a gap of, you leave a gap of five like one, two, three, four, five, right? Something like that and then you can place more and more tables like coming across. So I'm going to place one set there, one set coming in from the other side and then I'll see if I, if I want to place any more or not. I might just leave it as it is like that but that's pretty much how you would fill up this area and it looks really cool if you do put stuff on the tables like that as well so uh, once you have populated that area of tables or whatever it is you might want there so what I actually decided to do instead was keep that half kind of like an eating area but just put like a really basic basketball hoop on this side with like a basketball and I think it works kind of nicely like I'm sure that you guys would be able to put this together if not a better one for yourself that it does look a little bit weird I'll be honest with you but it does give you the idea that this particular half it could be split in half so it it can be multi-purpose which I quite like so feel free to make more tables or maybe like put a basketball hoop there or you know something else that you might like so on this side here we are going to have a football or a soccer pitch whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter and to make it we're going to use some quartz stairs some quartz slabs some cobwebs some white concrete and some dark oak buttons and we're going to start on at both ends of the pitch we need a net on this side and a net on that side and what we're going to do is starting from the corners on both sides we're going to count inwards and find the sixth block one two three four five six move in and place a quartz block and we're going to do this on the other side one two three four five six quartz block quartz stair on top like that we're going to place a quartz slab above and on top so like above and forwards going to extend those forwards and join them down to the ground like so take a few slabs and we're going to fill the sides of the net in with cobweb and also the back portion we're going to fill in with cobweb as well and we're also just going to add quartz slabs to the top too so those are going to be the nets i know that they're basic nets feel free to make more complicated ones if you like 
Uh, we're going to come all the way over to this opposite side here, and we're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to use the opposite net to kind of like mark out where it should be. We place quartz blocks on each end. We place a couple of cobwebs in between. We should be able to, yep, perfectly just place on top of the cobwebs. We have two rows of quartz slabs on top of the net, and we join both sides down using quartz blocks to, to or quartz slabs and turn them into quartz blocks. Uh, we have to fill the back of the net in with cobweb because that's kind of the most important part, to be honest. There we are. Something like that. That looks, uh, that looks perfectly fine. And we also have to, if you want, you can split the field in half. Now, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna count it out, but I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna hope that this is about the middle of the field. And by the way, the, the field isn't, uh, isn't like an odd number, so it isn't perfectly gonna be split in half. But that will do. You can find the actual middle of the field if you like. And I'm just going to chuck a football down, which is going to be white concrete and dark oak buttons on it. You could use grey as well, and it kind of just looks like a, a football. So that is what the back of the school will look like. And, uh, well, once you've finished that, ladies and gentlemen, once you've got the back of the school taken care of, you've actually done the entire thing. Now this is what your school will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. Very well done ladies and gentlemen, this has been a huge city build and this will make such a huge impact in your cities or towns or worlds once you have completed it. This is all of the outside of the school complete. There is no more to add. The front, the back, the sides, the entire building, the roof, it is all fully complete. Very nicely done, my friends. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. No more. School's out. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you're new around here, please do consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all of these videos sent directly to your sub box, which is going to be incredibly important considering the fact that we do have a couple more school related builds that we're going to be making on the channel very soon, such as the inside and also the school bus itself. So you're not going to want to miss those. If you want to make any other city related builds by me, I'd highly check out the card system, the description below and the top of the comment section for the city builds playlist, which is the same place that you will find the inside and the school bus as well. So you can find all of those in the card system, the description below and the top of the description. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I appreciate all of you very, very, very much. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.